That's the old folks. Amen. <laughs> AdamantBeliever.com forward slash love him with your life 10. As soon as mine. Amen. And we, we had technical difficulties this morning. That's why we were, they were singing in different keys. And so their ear things went out or something and they was all singing in a different key. And that's okay. Give the Lord a joyful, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. <laughs> I wanted to stop it, but I, I would have felt like a heathen because y'all, some of y'all actually had your hands up and was worshiping. I wasn't right here this is y'all. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Stop this! <laughs> and Eddie had to reboot the system, so he usually waits until after the song. I want him to pull the plug right there. Pull it! Pull it! Just stop everything, because <laughs> it's a hot mess. I can't do it but laugh. Mostly somebody's like, what? It sounded great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You just got moved up some seats for next Sunday. We're going to move you up. But uh, yeah, but you know, it's man-made stuff. So, you know, we're not sitting around a piano singing. We got a bunch of equipment up here working. So something happened and you know, it just, amen. I was like Robert Townsend, that's my song. <laughs> that's my song. <laughs> Five heartbeats. <laughs> nah, man. Nah, dresser. <laughs> that's, that's my song. goodness but anyway <laughs> all right love him with your life ten all right <laughs> amen to love God with your life means you have to be willing to what who get ready who get ready for this message this this gonna stir the pot right here to love God with your life means you have to be willing. You have to agree to love his creation the way he does. And when I say creation, I'm not talking about grass. So like, but I do love trees, pastor. The trees are beautiful. Oh, God made a wonderful sky. I love it just like he loves the wonderful sky. Oh, the the air it just feels so oh I just love all the seasons uh, my favorite is fall but I love all the seasons all four of them oh the Yobo show I loved his creation I love it no 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 you know what I'm talking about people people I could stop right there and just have altar call right now. Because if you're gonna love God with your life, you gotta be willing. That means it might be a struggle sometimes. Amen? But you gotta be willing to love his creation the way he does. John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever does what? Believe. Believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world so much, he gave his only begotten son. He did all of this, so he's not gonna give you a pass to hate somebody. He's not gonna give you a pass to wish harm on someone. He's not going to give you a pass to dislike someone to the point to where you won't even pray for. He's not going to give you a pass to take their salvation away or their hope of being better. You can't take that either. You can't condemn anyone in this life. I know I just preach. I'm, I'm just letting it marinate. I'm letting it sink in. Because it's going to get tougher for you. God loves us what? Unconditionally. 
Even before he came to save us, he loved us. So even before Jesus died for us, God loved us. He made us. That showed you how much he loved us. He didn't make us dumb either. He made us very highly intelligent. Yeah. Then he made us in his own image. How could he dislike his image? He loves what he made. The Old Testament testifies of just how much God loves his creation. People like to make God this angry God that destroyed everybody and everything in the Old Testament. Now, he did destroy some stuff, but he destroyed it because of his love. Yeah, he wouldn't let them get away with destroying themselves. He did things to stop them, to make them act better. He put them in places where they could repent and do better. He let them go in bondage and in exile just so that they would behave better. They'll take their affections off false gods and worship the true and the living God. That's what a father does, amen? A father has a belt. And a father takes that belt and smacks kids with it. Am I telling the truth? A mother, if the father's not there or whatever and a belt is around, you gotta grab it too. Sometimes you can't get your nails done that day. Because there's, there's a beating required. Nails just going to get in the way. You ain't going to be able to swing it with the same velocity. Yeah. You're, what you're doing, you're chasing a nail. Sometimes it hurts you to punish them. It hurts you to punish them. I didn't have a problem punishing Landon. Didn't feel bad ever. I don't feel bad about punishing Jonathan. He give you a look every now and then, but I'm just like, whatever. But old Vicky, it was hard. That was hard. I would whip her and then I'd feel it. I'd have to leave and go cry or something. It just felt bad, even though she needed it more than them two put together. <laughs> But it was just something that just, it was just hard. But I knew I had to do it as a father. I had to do it. And my wife would always leave that to me. The punishment department, she would leave it to me. Your daddy gonna get you, go, go in there with your daddy, whatever it was. And I would have to do it. And sometimes I would have to come out of myself to do it because I didn't want to. But I knew it was in their best interest because if I let them do that, then they're gonna think they can get away with that everywhere. Amen? So I had to, like Celie said, I had to beat her. <laughs> beat her. <laughs> I'm just in all the movies today, ain't I? Huh? Come on, let me keep going. Maybe another one will pop up. <laughs> yeah, but even before he came to save us, he loved us. Proverbs 3 and 12, for whom the Lord loveth, he does what? Correct it. What do you think the law was about? He gave them the law to correct them so that they would be a better people and have long life. Laws keep you alive long. When you're lawless, you die young. Oh, I need some teenagers clapping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're lawless, man, you, you, you die young. When you're absent of rules and absent of regulations you, and govern, being governed. So he gave them the law to preserve them as a people. Even as a father, uh, even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. So for whom the Lord loveth, he corrected even as a father. The son in whom he, he delighted. So he, a father's going to correct his son no matter how much it hurts him because he knows that's good for him. That'll pro prolong his life. Amen? Don't go soft on your children in here. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you got to break out the strap. The belt strap. That means something different now. Break out the strap. <laughs> Not that strap. Save that for the end times, amen. The zombie apocalypse, amen. 
To be good with God, we must be good with his people. Do you know every time you come to God, you have to make sure you're good with his people. <laughs> yeah. If you have hatred in your heart, resentment for someone, you can't come before God. Because all while you're talking, asking, begging, and pleading, he's thinking about that person you hate. He's thinking about that situation you won't deal with. He's thinking about what's in your heart, not what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Folks text me sometimes, inbox me, whatever, man. I've been having problems sleeping, insomnia, whatever. My first question, I don't ask him, well, what, what did you eat? I don't ask him, what is your diet like? I don't ask him, you know, what you're going through, what you're dealing with. I don't ask him any of that. First thing I'm going to ask you is, you need to forgive somebody? What you carrying? Because that will keep you from sleeping. Somebody, well, when I'm up, I don't be thinking about them. You don't have to be thinking about them. The fact is, when you try to go to sleep, you can't rest because there's unrest in your spirit. Oh, the hand claps. That's about a 50% one right there, but that's okay. I'm going to stay right there. I'm digging this all in the womb. Just, oh, oh I got all kind of alcohol. I'm pouring it in there. Yeah, because when you come in for the Lord, you got to be good. You can't write your own rules. He said, when you stand praying, forgive. That your Father in heaven will forgive you. That's the bottom line. Look at somebody say, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. That has to happen first. To be good with God, we must be good with his people. We can't ignore hatred and disdain for others in our approach to him. You can't ignore it. If you have hatred for someone, you can't ignore it. That means you're not good with God. We cannot ignore hatred. And if you have disdain for someone, oh, he's, oh he make me sick, she make me, oh, I can't stand him. I can't stand. Okay, that's a human emotion, that's a human reaction. I get that. But don't carry that over to where it's implanted in your heart. Amen? Now, you know, yeah, I feel like that about folks sometimes. Oh, jive turkey. Oh, you know. <laughs> but I'm not carrying that to the next day. People going to do you wrong. People going to do things. But you can't embed that in your spirit. Because that's going to block your path to God. Do y'all believe this? Okay. Everybody thinking about somebody. Ooh. Ooh, you came for me, Lord. Ooh. Ooh. First John 4 and 20. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, what is he? He's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? So what you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Coming to church and bucking and shouting and kicking and all that and have hatred in your heart. Yeah. A bad spirit in that church because of the hatred in folks' hearts. The organ ain't playing that away. The choir's not going to sing it away. The homosexual not going to direct it away. He gonna make it worse. <laughs> it, no, no, somebody needs to deal with that. Why are you mad? Why don't y'all like each other? Y'all sit across the aisle from each other every Sunday and have an amen contest. Who can say it at the right time? Anybody can say it, but oh, it's gotta be that right time. And y'all battling back and in church. Yeah, because see, folks, like I always say, folks concentrating on the big sins. Yeah. Waiting on somebody to, yeah, fall into murder or adultery or something like that. And they don't understand this sin right here will destroy the church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
The love for one another will hold it together under any circumstance. Yeah, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he what? Hath not seen. Can I keep going? Unconditionally loving someone is really, oh, listen to this. Unconditionally loving someone is really loving who a person has the potential to be. Oh, I could stop right there. Oh! Yeah, you loving who they have the potential. They could be a wretched rascal. But if you unconditionally love them, you're loving who they have the potential to be. You love who you believe they can become. That's why you can't wish them dead. Oh, it's time for folks to just start dying. I hate when people say that. I'm getting away from you, bro. You in your death zone. I don't want people to start dying. Oh, it's time for the folks to start dropping dead. Dropping dead. <laughs> Yeah, I got a whole lot of stuff that's drop dead worthy. Oh, see, okay, well, no, no, y'all, y'all, y'all good, y'all, everybody good, you good, you, you. If if, if the dropping dead start, we all die. So I don't like all that. Don't you get up and prophesy that? I'm taking the mic from you. Shut up. That ain't God. God said somebody in here about to die. Shut up, I rebuke you. We rebuke death. You ain't finna bring that mess in here. That's foolishness. He rose with all power in his hand. Power over death, hell, and the grave. We declare life in here. I walk right behind your messy tail because you got somebody in your mind you think about going to drop dead because of what she did to you. Cut you off at the supermarket. You in that prophesied old oh, somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to. Her name start with an M. Oh. We ain't letting that foolishness happen in here, Jack. Sit down. Why would you say that? Why would you immediately start praying? If you felt something bad like that was going to happen to somebody, why are you announcing it to the world and you happy about it? God showed me in a dream that so-and-so was going to die. Wake up and pray for him. And maybe it has something to do with that extra large pizza laying next to you in the bed. I know how to stop them dreams. Quit eating at 3 a.m. Cotton candy bag next to the bed. What is wrong with you? You know, God showed me. God. I'm not announcing that. I'm not. If it came in my spirit that somebody was in danger. Why would I get on the internet and put that on the internet? Oh, that somebody, God showed me that this person, what? Out of all the people I dealt with, even in the truth behind hip-hop, the people, I show their lyrics, I show what they saying, I show what they're proud of. I ain't never wish death on none of them. I want them to change it. I'm preaching in here. I know I am. But you got to love who you believe they can become. You know why? Look at your raggedy self. Ooh, anybody raggedy? Anybody just wretched? You a wretch undone? Mother like, don't you call me that boy. I'm still your mama. Talking about the belt. I, hey. <laughs> Now, I'm not rich, undone. 
to be rich, not under. But really though, I mean, none of us are in position. So because we had potential and we didn't even know it, we didn't know it, we thought it was over for us. Anybody thought it was over before God showed you that it's not? Yeah, so how we gotta keep that same hope for everyone else? No matter how jive turkey they are, no matter how wretched they are, you gotta believe, hey, I was like that. You don't be comparing yourself, well, see, now I didn't, I never did that. But you did that. Yeah, now I did that. But I've never done that. That don't make you better, that makes you crazy. The old folk used to say, don't ever say what you won't do. Let the devil get in your chest real good. You'll do some stuff you never thought you'd do. First Corinthians 13 and 7. Love does what? Puts up with everything. Ooh. Bears all. Man, if somebody had read this on the wedding day. They'd still be married. Because love bears all. You mean I got to stay with him even though he's a job? Yes. You loved him at one point, didn't you? Yeah, well then you can love him again. Let God get a hold of his heart. Won't you pray for him? I did. I did pray. Is he alive? Then keep praying. Why do people, oh, listen to the hand. Stop, just stop clapping. Stop clapping. <laughs> Give me the more whack clap. <laughs> just don't clap. I don't need it. But you, it bears, <laughs> bears all things. Yeah, you'd have stayed, now you would have tried to work it out. Especially if you have the, had the knowledge you have now. Now, God is only going to judge you for the knowledge you had at the time. Now that you've come to the knowledge of the truth, you ain't getting no divorce. Some folks have come to me. Pastor, I think I'm going to leave them and go where? Where you going? Where are you going where you're not going to be? It's not going to be any different. I don't care who you find. You know why? Because they found you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it ain't all my fault. Half of it is. And really, in God's eyes, both of y'all are 100% at fault. He don't see people as halves. <laughs> yeah, so you just work it out. That's my advice. Don't come to me with anything else. That's what I'm going to tell you. Work that out. Because a couple of months from now, you won't even remember this. God can bring a love upon y'all. Y'all can reconcile. And you won't even remember this day. The only way I can guarantee that you remember this day is if you make the wrong decision this day. I'm preaching here. Yeah. Marriages, you're going to go through stuff in a marriage because you're in it. And here's the thing, you get out the marriage, you're still going to go through stuff. You bad with somebody, just imagine what you're going to be without. Oh, you're going to be a raving lunatic. You better stay in that marriage and work it out. Amen. Well, but he ain't saved. Get him saved. How do I get him saved? By acting right. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says he can, he can be won by your behavior, by your decision making. Quit putting a Bible on his breakfast tray. If he ain't saved, he ain't going to read that. He opened it up looking for eggs and bacon and eat the box. What? <laughs> Why is this Bible? Yeah. But love bears all. It believes all. It never stops believing. It hopes all and it endures all things. That's God's love. And he expects us to love people like that. Yes. You can't hate people and love the Lord. Go 
God ain't gonna even let you pray to him if you hate folks. You think you're praying, but you know you're not. You know something is wrong. You know it. You know when something is wrong, you go before God, you know. You know you did something and you need to go make it right. You can't hate people and love the Lord. No matter what they did to you, love must what? Cover a multitude. You mad at what somebody said about you? And there are folks who have killed people and God has forgiven them. <laughs> Through the people, the family of the victim. The family of the victim. Can you imagine somebody kill one of your loved ones and you're faced with forgiving them? Because you have to. And I've seen parents just... I've seen the Holy Ghost supernaturally empower people to be able to forgive the person that killed one of their loved ones. And you sitting up here tripping because somebody said. They still alive and you still good. But because they said it. Can I keep pre Yeah. Mad at them. You mad at folks in here. Because of what somebody said. Somebody said an opinion of someone? Is it that easy to ruffle your feathers over some words? And how many things have you said that you really didn't mean? Oh, I know I'm deep down in it today. Yeah, how many times? Man, what if we had a recording in our house and can play back the conversations. Oh my goodness, you have to bleep out some of it for some of y'all. But you know, you're just talking about somebody and oh, oh he just, he's he crazy, he, they, they just, they, but you don't mean it like, you, you know what I'm saying? If somebody was to hear it and take it, they could make it sound like you really have an offense when you're just talking like a human. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you can't trust when people come to you and tell you what somebody else said or did. Because the whole spirit behind it changes when the tattletale get a hold of it. When the tattletale gets it, there's a personal vendetta there. They're trying to put an issue they have in someone else so they will have some company. They're trying to take dysfunction and implant it in your situation so your functional situation will be dysfunctional like theirs. Get your low self-esteem self away from it. Because that's all it is, a bunch of mess. And then you interpreted it. She said, what? Yeah, well, I heard. Now, she didn't tell me. <laughs> then it's the end of it. Get out. can't hate people and love the Lord. Yes, I'm preaching in here. That's why it's quiet. I, I, conviction. That's what they call that. Amen. No matter what they did to you. And me, you know, me and my wife, y'all know. Anybody that's close to me know I talk about everybody. That's what I do. I just. But I don't do it maliciously. I, don't, I ain't hurt nobody like that. But yeah, if there's a possible joke in the situation, I'm going to crack it. I'm just not going to let it pass. I, I, this is an opportunity <laughs> for some belly laughter. I'm going for that. But I do, though. I, and when I say talk about it, I don't mean I'm like tearing people down. But I do have an opinion on everyone in here. Because y'all are members at ABC. I have an opinion. I have formulated an opinion on everybody in here. It's my right as a pastor to do that. When I go before God, I got to tell him something. When he called your name, I got to be able to come. Wait a minute, Lord, now. That's the one that, uh, you know. It's my job. But it don't mean I hate anybody. It don't mean I don't. Some of y'all, I love that relationship. That's like just the way we communicate. I asked my sister. That, that's what you need to do. My, my kin folks. It's just the way I am. But I don't mean anything by it like that. I'm not going to walk around feeling some kind of way go to somebody else with it. 
I'm going to come to you. If it's important. Won't I do that? Don't I do that, y'all? Yeah, I'm going to come to you, bro. We need to talk about this. Because I'm not sleeping on it. I want it out of my heart. First Peter 4 and 8, above all. How much is all? Above everything. Keep loving one another earnestly. Since love covers a what? So keep the love going because love is what's going to keep you together. Amen. It covers a multitude of sins. Loving doesn't necessarily mean being in fellowship with them, though. Amen. Amen. When you get sick of me, you sick of my preaching, you sick of the music, whatever you sick of it here, when it's time, when you feel it's time for you to move on, do it lovingly. Let's have a conversation or no conversation, just bounce. Because that obviously means that we're not supposed to be in fellowship together. And I'm good with that. I'm not going to talk about you. We ran into a brother not too long ago while we was eating. And he had left the church, him and his wife. And they didn't make no noise about it. They just had left. And when I saw him, he's like, man, I still listen to everything. I watch all your videos. He started telling me about the latest video on YouTube. I watch it all and all that, man. We just, you know, felt like we needed to move on. Bruh! Dapped him up. Love you, bro. I'm going to love you to Jesus God. Especially because you handled the situation like that. I'm good with that, bro. Like, ain't no, ain't nothing there. He made a decision for his family. When this COVID and stuff started, he felt like, hey, we don't need to be in a large group right now. And that's fine. I wasn't, oh, but brother, where's your faith? Where's your, no, I'm not keeping nobody here that is not here. Bruh, look at them seats over there. I, hey, hey. We're not doing that. So I'll let you go, let you handle it. Might come back, man. I don't know. This is God's church. Amen. I'll manage what's in here, but when it starts, start, hey. No. Can I keep preaching in here? That's what happens. Folk get ambitious and want folks at any cost. So you got a lot of people, but you got a lot of demons too. You can't do the will of God trying to appease all the people. You can't preach the truth trying to keep all the people. Thank you, Pierre. I need to move you up closer. <laughs> but loving doesn't necessarily mean being in fellowship with them. So you don't have to be in fellowship with everybody. That's not a sign of love. Amen. Some folk I ain't ever going nowhere with. I ain't going nowhere with you. I love you, but man, what? I ain't me and you can't go nowhere. And that's okay. You have to be good with that. However, it does mean forgiving them and not bringing up what they did to you. Uh-oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the hard one. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. I didn't expect, thank you for clapping that, Dre, but I didn't expect no claps because I wasn't going to clap. That's hard. That's, that's hard, not bringing up what somebody did to you, especially if they really hurt you. That's hard. The human in us, I mean, I know some of y'all are so sanctimoniously fourth dimensional saying. You can just, oh, it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do. Well, some folk have done stuff to me, it's sometimes hard to let it go. It is, and it's hard to not bring it up. Especially when it's fresh, it'll just keep bubbling up. You be talking about something else, and you just get on that subject. You're like, oh, what's wrong? Man, I said I wasn't going to say that no more. I wasn't going to talk about that no more. But it just bubbled up in me because you were extremely hurt. Can I be honest? Oh, I'll be glad when the sugar come back. <laughs> y'all just, all with y'all. Yeah, so it's hard, man. It's hard. But forgiving them, you're not supposed to bring it up. You're not supposed to bring up what they did. Definitely, I ain't supposed to be talking to other people about it. 
Yeah, and busting them up and trying to gang up, get folks on your side so you can feel better about it. That's not God. None of that's God. Heard a brother talking the other day. Actually, it was John uh, Ramirez, and he was saying how Joseph, and I had never seen this. But he, he, he's a powerful man of God, so of course he's going to see it. I never saw this. And he was talking about the account of Joseph when his brothers came. And then he told them to go get your father. And he told the father, and then the father came. Remember that? And he was there to help him. And Joseph never told the father what the brothers had done. Right. Sold him into slavery. Threw him in a well. Faked his death. They thought he was dead. Then went back. They came, got him out, sold him. Brought his father, and his father just, he, all he wanted was to love his father and his brothers. He didn't bring it up, see? Jacob, no, no, don't you come over here. Do you know what he did to me? That's powerful. Yeah. So, man, humans. Humans, they going to do human. They going to do human stuff. And when you mad enough, you do human stuff too. You say stuff you wish you hadn't said. I'm going to stop the clapping again. It's making me bad. Just <laughs> I want y'all to get this. But it does mean forgiving them and not bringing up what they did to you. True deliverance is when you can look past their attacks and love them in spite of it. That's true deliverance. You can love them in spite of it because somebody loved you in spite of yours. 1 Corinthians 13 and 5. Love does not act unbecomingly. Amen. You'll be getting into it with folks. Arguing with folks. Making a scene with folks. I could make plenty of scenes in here. <laughs> but I don't. I won't even rebuke a man in front of his wife. That's my standard. I'm not going to make him look some kind of way in front of the woman that has to respect him or his children. I'm, not gonna, I'm just not going to do it. So if I got a problem with you in here, man, we're going to go in the room. I'm going to talk. We're going to iron it out. Because I'm going to look like an idiot if I'm having a shouting match. So you don't go front somebody out and yelling and acting a fool and all of that. We ain't going to be friends later. But you done turn the room against somebody. I'm preaching. I don't care what you think. 1 Corinthians 13 and 5. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. And is what? Real love is what? It's not provoked. So you ain't going to make me come out of myself. Just because you acting a fool. I'm going to stay who I am all while you acting a fool. Amen. Because eventually you're going to get tired of fighting with the air. Amen. I'm not going back and forth with you. I'm not fighting with you. We're not going to ask you that. I'm not doing any of that, bro. If you can't accept my apology, if you can't, get, give, if you can't forgive me, brother, then I can't help you. And the last conversation I had, you forgave me. So what are we supposed to do? So it does, it's not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. So don't be winding history back and bringing up stuff. You can't hold somebody in contempt about stuff you can't get over. I know I preached. Because you can't get over it, you're going to hold them in contempt, hold them to a place in their life, 
and not expect God's best for them because you can't get past it? Let me tell you something. Life moves on. You'll be sitting there mad. You'll be sitting there in the same place you were five years ago, ten years ago, thinking up a way to get back at somebody. They're on the swings in the park. Remember that? Life, man, life is going to keep going. Oh, it's going to keep going whether you're going or not. And you see them happy, and you, oh, they happy. Oh, I got to stop that. Now you just done turn into a demon. It started out as a little argument. Now you wishing somebody would die so they won't be happy. Because I'm going to be happy. I have a beautiful wife. Look at her hat. <laughs> Chile. Beautiful cheering. Look at that big old pretty boy over there. Look at that little cute one over there. Got some pretty children. <laughs> My life is good. I thank God for it. But I ain't finna sit up here and worry about some foolishness. Bruh, that's what God made swings for. Ain't nobody swinging and crying. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, but it does not act unbecomingly. It doesn't seek its own. It's not provoked. It does not take into a account a wrong suffering. Amen. Can I take my time, y'all? We don't, we don't have a game today, so amen. It's taking me a little while. Jesus taught us how to view believers that are doing things that are evil. Now, did y'all hear the statement I just made? So, see, somebody is so strict holiness, they can't wrap their minds around a believer actually doing something that's evil. Believers do evil. Yeah, they do evil, they sin, they say the wrong thing, they hurt folks, they go after folks, they do whatever, believers. Can I just be honest, Elder? I'm just trying to let you know. And you better, you better believe me. You know why you need to believe this? Because you're going to do something stupid. Yes, you are. Look at somebody. No, I, I'm not clapping at that. Yeah, you will. You're going to do something. And you're going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing the teeth trying to keep your salvation, believing that you lost it. You're going to believe you lost it. You know why? Because you raised your standard too high for other folks. Yeah. Yeah. You condemned other people. So when you do that, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to fall. And then you're going to condemn your own self with the same condemnation you condemned others with. It always works that way. Oh, pastor, so you preaching the once save always. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. If a person don't want to be saved, they're not going to be saved. Look. Uh-huh. Come on, Baptist folk. Clap. Clap, Baptist. Because that's the truth. But Jesus taught us how to view believers that are doing things that are evil. So sometimes, not her, but sometimes believers do things that are evil. Some of y'all are sitting in here now plotting against somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She hugged my husband a little tight. We're going to have to do something about that. Talking to yourself. We're going to have to do something about that. All while I'm preaching, you just... Mm -hmm. I'm thinking you agreeing with what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. God is good! You're having a whole nother crazy conversation. Yo, <laughs> you crazy. Mm -hmm. A little too tight. Mm -hmm. But this is the last Sunday that's going to happen. It's the last Sunday. Yeah. Then after service, you're going to go to another sister 
and gossip. Can I preach in the house? No, you don't do that. Most of the time, you just need to stand down anyway and go to the Lord about it. Lord, did, she, did I see what I thought? Or maybe I'm feeling some kind of way because he ain't hugged me in weeks. I will preach in here. You ask the Lord. Ask him. You could have been motivated by something totally different. But you're still a believer. Jesus cracked the sky. You're probably going to go. <laughs> probably going to go with him. Yeah, I mean, you had something in your heart at that moment, whatever, but that wasn't a deal breaker. You still say, I believe. I need you to be because, I mean, we all make mistakes. That's why we repent before him. But he said he's married to the backslide. We don't throw away our husband and wife because we some, something went down between us. Well, you're not supposed to. Ooh, let me finish this bullet. Jesus taught us how to view. You know, I speak as the Holy Ghost give me stuff to say, so I'll be back. Jesus taught us how to view believers that are doing things that are evil. The way he spoke to Peter tells us everything we need to deal with carnal believers. What did he speak to Peter? Jesus told him, I'm going to have to die. I'm going to have to leave y'all. And I'm going to be resurrected on the third day. The Bible says in Mark 8 and 33, but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, get thee behind me. What? Satan. Satan. So Peter laid hands on him, tried to stop him, rebuke Jesus for what he just said. But Jesus looked at him. He didn't throw Peter away. He didn't say, Peter, you're a lost cause. Man, you just messed up. Look what you said. He knew that that wasn't even really Peter. Peter was saying something he had no understanding of. So it couldn't have been Peter. So Jesus spoke to the culprit. He said, get thee behind me who? Satan. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Peter didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> Jesus spoke to the devil that was speaking through Peter. He knew it was not Peter that was necessarily evil. Just like when you sin, God has compassion. He knows, he knows what you've been through. He knows your issues. He knows the dysfunction you grew up in. He knows all the things that came together to cause that action. So he don't throw you away. Amen. He looks past that and he addresses that devil that's in your life. You got to do something about this devil. He knew it was not Peter that was necessarily evil, but rather the enemy had acted through him to speak against Christ. Back it up, Matthew 16, 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. You don't rebuke Jesus. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. You don't understand, you can't rebuke the word. If the word spoke it, it has to come to pass. So, brother, you don't even know what you're doing. You're going against the word, and you're trying to stop the redemption of mankind. But it's not you, because you're not that deep, Peter. <laughs> Jesus addressed it right. And that's how we're supposed to view believers. When they're doing things that are evil. <sighs> Jesus later gave Peter an opportunity to be restored. Even after he had denied him. And allowed the devil to use him at the worst time in Jesus' life. Think about this. Even after this ordeal, getting rebuked. Then he slices the dude's ear off, which he shouldn't have done. Then he's standing around the fire. Denied Jesus three times, cussing. Sitting on the beach, buck naked, around the fire, and who comes to him? The one that never left him. <laughs> the one that never left him. Peter, you was with me. I called you. Bro, this is forever. It's forever. You can't mess this up, Peter. Peter. 
So he gave him a whole opportunity. John 21 and 17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, so you have to know I love you. You came back for me. And he said, Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. So he never gave up on the call he originally had for Peter. Out of all the things Peter did, he didn't mess the call up. Summary! Powerful message. Amen, if I should say so myself. Y'all, we all gonna get along in here, I promise you. That's the only thing that, that, that bothers me about the crowd. I don't have no problem with people coming and the church growing and all that kind of stuff other than building and rent and stuff. But, I, <laughs> but the only thing is I just want everyone to get along. I want everyone to love each other. Yeah, I knew the, if we go on a fast, we start praying, I knew things were gonna start coming up in people and they're not gonna even recognize how they feel about a certain person. Been carrying it all this time. We gotta let that stuff go. Every part of the snake got to get out of here. Amen. And we all gotta get along. Gotta love each other. Can't gossip. Can't talk about folks in here. Going, just can't do it. Can't be arguing. And we're just not doing it in here. Amen, that's the devil. People do things that are harmful to us. They say things to hurt us and use slanderous lies to discredit us. They fight against the plan of God for our lives because their plan is not working for them and they feel inferior. Yeah, those are the only people that do that. Or they are just jealous and wish they had what we have. You know people will talk about you because they're jealous. And wish they had what you had. People can even hate the peace you have. And this causes them to disturb your peace. Oh, they too happy. They too happy. They think they something. They got something because I'm happy? Always smiling and act like nothing bothers them. Oh, I'm going to give them something. I'm going to do something. I bet this bother. I bet this bother. I bet this bother. You demon, shut up. That's the devil. She thinks she cute. She thinks she cute. She look at her, slinging her hair. Look at her. Look at her. I'm going to go buy me some hair that's going to look just as good. I'm going to take her picture when I go. Yeah, just jealous, jealous. Or they want to disturb your peace because they see you have peace. Some just want you to fight and argue because that's their crazy love language. That's the way I handle things. I bites. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's your crazy look like love like you grew up fighting in your neighborhood. So you think it's supposed to be like that in church. Come on, dude. Come on. Bro. I just asked you, could I sit right there? No! No, man. It's the way we do things. Uh, let me finish this message. It's, it's good. But that's your love language. Some people, that's their love language. They want an argument. They want an argument. They want to call you out. So you'll confront them so they can have an argument and feel you love them. And then after it's over, man, you know I didn't mean none of that, man. You know I love you, dude. You my dog. No, nah, dog, I don't fight my dog. My dog try to bite me, I'm killing him. I'm gonna shoot him in the head. I'm shooting Spyro in the head if he try to bite me or any of my kids. 
I'm shooting him. He's dead. So I don't have no dogs that like to fight me. I don't believe in that. No. No, man. But that's some folks' crazy love language. Others are simply just mean and angry at life and need to lash out at someone they feel thinks highly of themselves and less of them. Whatever the reason, people can do some pretty evil things, amen? But that does not mean it's the end of them, and it definitely doesn't mean that God is finished with them. Can I preach? We are all a work in progress, and had it not been for the Lord changing us, we would be just like them. Let the conviction of the Lord ooze all out of you. Let it just, just spread it like lotion over an ashy knee. Get it down in there. Just get it in there. <laughs> Let the conviction do what it's here to do. I'm telling you, I know you're convicted. I feel it. But that does not mean it's the end. We are all a work in progress. And had it not been for the Lord changing us, we would be just like them. We must forgive and let things go when people wrong us. Amen? We must love in spite of their actions because God loves us in spite of ours. You know how sick of you God is sometimes? This doesn't mean we have to keep letting people mistreat or even deceive us. Now, I'm not going to hang around if you mistreat me. I'm not going to hang around if you're trying to deceive me. I ain't going to hang around. I ain't going to hate you, but I ain't hanging around. But it does mean that we have to forgive each offense and let it go. Each offense and let it go. Amen? Sometimes letting it go encompasses letting them go. Uh-oh. Yeah, somebody, see, I knew this marriage was... <laughs> I'm not talking about marriage. I'm not talking about marriage. <laughs> we may have to separate from them or give them time for their tantrum to run its course. It's going to run its course, you know why? Because life's going to move on. Yeah. So when they upset, they're going crazy and all that, you know what I do. I turn the hourglass over because life is going to continue. Brother, you're not stopping life. That's why I'm careful what I do. You got to be careful what you do to people because life is going to continue. You're going to have to see them or something. You might be in for something. Some people... Where I stop? Yeah, we may have to separate from them or give them time for their tantrum to run its course. Some people have so much anger and resentment for their own lives that they may never stop allowing the devil to use them. So we have to make sure we know what distance to keep. However, we must love them unconditionally. If they come for forgiveness, we must forgive. If they do not come for forgiveness, guess what we got to do? We still forgive. If we go to them to forgive, then we forgive. We make sure that God's love is shown through us and we love them. When you can lay down your pride to love the very ones that are against you, that exemplifies truly loving God with your life. Beautiful parable here, story. Jesus told Matthew 8 and 23, 18 and 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife, his children, and all that he had, and payment be made. So sell everything, including yourself, so you can pay me back. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him. Did send him off and say, okay, come back in 30 days. The Bible says he forgave him the debt. 
had compassion and just forgave the whole thing. All right, man, we good. But that same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him, took him by his throat, saying, pay me that thou owest. So he was jive. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. But he would not. But he went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then the Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? even as I had pity on thee. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Everyone stand to your feet. So in order to love God with our lives, we have to love his creation, those that he made, people. Got to love people. Some folks got people phobia, and they just, because people have done them so wrong, things have happened in their lives or certain things, they just don't trust nobody, they ain't trying to love nobody, and they're definitely not forgiven people. Well, you won't go to heaven like that. You got to forgive or you'll be guilty of your own spiritual debt. That's what the story illustrated. Yeah. You're guilty of your sins if you deny forgiveness to someone else. Yeah. The parable, he said, this is what God is going to do when he said he gave him to the tormentors until he should pay it. Well, he can't pay it because he don't have it. And that's what's going to happen with hell. You're going to be given to the tormentors until you pay. But the wages of sin is death. So you can't pay it without Jesus. So you're in hell forever. So we want to make sure we don't have it on our heart. We want to make sure if it's a situation, if it's something, it just needs to go today. What's the date? The 26th? The 26th of September 20 and 21 is the day that I got it out of my heart and I'm not putting it back in there. I'm not letting anybody talk me back to that place. I'm not letting anything I see or hear put me back there. I'm not allowing anyone to provoke that in me. I'm let, letting it go today. 100% complete forgiveness to my brothers, my sisters, those that may have hurt me, those that may have, whatever it is, whatever you've experienced, you're going to let it go today so you can truly love God. Sometimes it's God that you got to forgive. Not that he did anything to you, but in your own heart, you felt that something happened and God should have been there. He should have stopped that. Whatever. You got to let God be God. Get that out of your heart. Your mother, your father. They should have been there. They should have raised me better. They shouldn't have put these deficits. They, they should have been looking when I was assaulted or when I was molested or whatever. They should have been there. Somebody should have stopped it. Whatever it is that you may be feeling. If you're going to love God with your whole life, this part right here has to be rectified. And you might as well do it today on the 26th. Today is the day. Let it go. If I'm talking to you, just come up here. I'm going to pray and trust and believe God that this is out of your life for good. Out of your life for good. Tired of it weighing me down. Tired of it dictating my next step. Tired of it just in my head. Tired of it. And it's hard sometimes, man. 
a missing father, a missing mother, someone that gave you up, someone that wasn't there for you, whatever it is, that gets hard, man. That's years and years. But you don't want the devil whispering that in your ear and bringing that back up, stopping your progress. You can't go forward. He knows, the devil always knows who to bring. He'll bring that snake, that snake to whisper in your ear. Tell you this, tell you that. Put you right back where you started. We're going to believe God on the 26th of September that all this prayer and fasting we've been doing has come to this right here. And I'm letting this go. We're letting this go. We letting what they did go. We letting who they, why they did it go. We don't care. It don't even matter. I'm not letting somebody control my life with their hatred or with their mistake or error. Nope. We letting it go because we all have error. So right now, everyone, just bow your heads. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for this word. And God, this is a powerful word. And a hard word. It's hard to do sometimes when people just purposely try to hurt you because they're hurting. And it's very hard sometimes to just see people in any other light other than the light of the devil that they're operating in. The darkness that they're operating in. So God, this is hard. It's hard. It's just hard. But I pray right now for everyone that has come up. I pray, Father God, that their anger would be dealt with in their heart. No anger issues, no lashing out, no cussing and fighting and arguing and yelling, no hitting others and just lashing out angrily, taking it out on their husband, their wife, or maybe they're not even married because of this. Father God, I pray right now that you would heal this in their hearts. Let true forgiveness come and permeate in their being, God, your forgiveness, so that they can love you with their entire life me include all of us god in here so we can love you the way you want us to love you let every transgression be forgiven in jesus name no more malice no more hatred no more bad wishes no more harm wishes no more father god no more help them to let it go right now let it go any art they have against anyone, let it go. They may not fellowship with them. We can't pull them in close anymore. Things have changed. I get all of that. But God, no unforgiveness. When I think of them, I'm going to think happy things. When I think of them, I'm not going to be angry. When I think about them, I'm not going to have hatred in my heart. God, I'm going to let this go. You've put wonderful people in our lives. And sometimes we mistreat those and we don't take advantage of those opportunities because of what others have done. So, Father, we come against all of that right now in the name of Jesus. Now everyone, lift your hands. Just lift your hands up high. Father, we just want to love you with our lives. So whatever is in your way, God, whatever is in your way, continue to lead us. Continue to speak to us through these messages. Continue, Father God, to help us get closer to you in this last hour. And for every hand that is raised, I pray right now, strength in this situation so that you can carry what you learned today embedded in your spirit and change. In the name that is above every name, we pray. Amen. 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 On your way to your seat, hug somebody and say, I've forgiven everybody. Tell them, I'm not mad at anybody. I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. I'm good with everybody. You might be next to somebody that you had something about. Girl, we good. Bro, we good. We good. We gonna be good in here in this church. We good, now don't leave now, 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 now. You, you got the instructions, go to your seat now. Amen. But we good, we are good. God is wonderful, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah.